For this example, we're going to look at this rational function y equals x squared plus 1 over x squared minus. So x-intercepts are where the top equals 0. So we're going to figure out for the x-intercepts where x squared plus 1 equals 0. So this is what we're doing now. Um, x squared plus 1 never equals 0 because it's a positive plus 1. Um, if you were to solve it, you would get plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which is imaginary, so there's no x-intercept. So, done. Y-intercepts, you plug in 0 for x. So basically, these x's will become 0. And I got positive 1 over negative 4, which is y equals negative 1 fourth. So that's the y-intercepts. Um, I did graph this on my graphing calculator. So I'm going to, before I go any further, I like to check. Um, you can see that there is no x-intercepts doesn't cross through this x-axis here. And there is a y-intercept very close to 0, but underneath 0, which indicates negative 1 fourth is probably correct. Vertical asymptotes are where the bottom equals 0. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, the bottom equals 0. You can see x squared minus 4. That would be x equals plus or minus 2. And horizontal asymptotes, since the degrees are the same, they're both squared. The leading coefficient at the top is 1. The leading coefficient at the bottom is 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 over 1, or just y equals 1. We're not going to talk about some asymptotes. Don't worry about that. So vertical asymptote at plus or minus. 2, horizontal asymptote at y equals, oops, y equals 1. So that looks pretty good so far. Uh, now it's time to do all the calculus stuff. So I went to Wolfram Alpha to get the derivatives. The, usually when you do Wolfram Alpha, this is important to realize, the first derivative will appear pretty nicely. The second derivative, be careful. Usually, the second derivative, the first answer they give you is unsimplified, and that's not very useful to us. So you're going to have to scroll down to look for an alternate form that's useful. The useful one is the one that's all factored. So this one is a really good one. You see how it's both, it's just everything's factored. So now we're going to answer all the derivative questions. The critical numbers are where the first derivative equals 0. So that's the first derivative. That equals 0 when the top equals 0. So obviously, 10x equals 0 when x equals 0. So I'm done with my critical numbers. The possible points of inflection are where the second derivative equals 0. There's the second derivative. And that would be where the top is 0. And 3x squared plus 4 will never equal 0. It's a positive number plus a positive number. So there are no points of inflection. Um, which also means there's going to be if there's no possible, there's going to be no points of inflection. That doesn't mean it doesn't change concavity because could, anything can happen at vertical asymptote. And I, let's point that out here. Um, one thing I failed to mention that when I was looking for critical numbers is critical numbers equal zero when the derivative is zero or when it's undefined. This derivative is undefined at plus or minus two but you do not include them because plus or minus two are the vertical asymptotes. It's going to be very important because you have to include them in any chart that you do. So when I go to my, my first derivative chart, which is the next thing I'm going to do, 
there's my first derivative. Be careful here. This first derivative has a negative out in front of it. Um, my critical number was x equals 0. I have to include the vertical asymptotes at plus and minus 2. So now, this is f prime of x. If you plug in, say, the derivative at negative 10, that's in that interval, you'll get a negative. This is always positive because it's squared. x squared minus 4 quantity is squared, so that's always positive. So it'll be a negative or a positive, which is negative. But see this negative? That changes it. So this would be a negative of a negative, which is positive, which means we're increasing on negative infinity to negative 2. So moving on, same thing. F prime of negative 1 will be a negative over a positive, which is a negative, then this negative again would change it to positive. So it's also increasing from negative 2 to 0. F prime of 1 will be a positive over a positive, but then you have this negative again, so it's negative. It's decreasing from 0 to negative 2. And finally, F prime of anything in this interval. If you plug in 100, you get a positive over a positive, but then the negative makes it negative, so that's decreasing. So that's the increasing decreasing. Now remember, a and my mistake here, if you look at this 2, I meant to draw that as a dashed line. That's important because I'm, the next thing I'm looking for is uh, min's maxes, and they can only occur at critical numbers, and zero is the only critical number. So the only place you have to look for a min or a max is at zero, which is right here, and because it goes from positive to negative, increasing to decreasing, that means zero is the maximum. So there is no min minimum. Uh, 0 is a maximum. That's the x-coordinate. To find the y-coordinate, you have to plug it into the original function. So when you plug in 0 to that, well, it's just the same thing as the y-intercept. It's negative 1 fourth. And if you look at the graph, well, yeah, it is. it does go from increasing and increasing, maximum, decreasing, decreasing. So that is that agrees with our first room of chart. So we're in great shape. The last thing I'm going to do is the concavity. Now, there are no points of inflection, but again, you always have to include vertical asymptotes in any chart you ever use because every anything can happen at vertical asymptotes. So, my second derivative right here just to remind me, I'll put it right here. Um, I'm going to plug use all my test values here. So f double prime of negative three. If you plug it into the second derivative, the top is always positive. 3x squared plus 4, always positive. The bottom, since it's cubed, well, can be either negative or positive. But if you plug negative 3 into the bottom, you'll get 9 minus 4, which is 5, positive. So positive or positive, which means positive, which means concave up on negative infinity to negative 2. And then we'll do the rest just the same. I'm going to go f double prime of 0 here. Top is always positive. The bottom would be 0 minus 4, which is negative. 
a negative cubed is negative. So that's negative, which is concave down. And lastly, second derivative at 10, positive up top, obviously positive on the bottom. That's concave up. So it's concave up on negative 2 to infinity. So we have every everything filled out. Uh, it goes from concave up to concave down to concave up. Concave up, concave down, concave up. Awesome. That's it. It was a pretty long process, but um, it's all review, so it should be pretty easy to handle, especially since you're going to Wolfram Alpha to get your derivatives. So have fun with that, and ask me if you have any questions. Until next time.